In this lesson, we'll examine the general strategy for approaching critical reasoning questions on the GMAT. Now, when people begin working with critical reasoning questions, every argument seems different. One involves trade embargoes, another involves pharmaceutical companies, another involves bald eagles, and so on. Since there appears to be a wide variety of topics, one might conclude that there are hundreds of different strategies for tackling critical reasoning questions. Fortunately, this is not the case. Although the number of argument topics may be unlimited, the number of question types is not. The truth is that almost all critical reasoning questions on the GMAT fall into one of the following categories, and each category has its own strategy. Now, it's important to note that each question type requires us to perform a different set of tasks. For example, one question type requires us to identify a new premise that will weaken the argument. Another question type requires us to identify an unstated assumption in the argument. And another question type requires us to identify a conclusion that must follow from the given premises. Given these differences from question type to question type, we need a general strategy that enables us to identify the question type as soon as possible. In fact, in a perfect world, we want to identify the question type before we even start reading the argument. Otherwise, if we don't know the question type until after we've read the argument, we'll likely have to go back and reread the argument to look for the information relevant to that particular question type. So whenever we encounter a critical reasoning question, our very first step in the general strategy will be to determine the question type as soon as possible. How do we determine the question type? By reading the question stem first. By reading the question stem, we should be able to determine the question type. For example, in upcoming lessons, we'll learn that if a question stem says something like, which of the following, if true, most effectively challenges the researcher's conclusion, then we'll recognize that this must be a weaken the argument type question. Once we know this, we can apply the strategy for weaken the argument questions as we read the argument in the passage. Similarly, if the question stem were to read, which of the following hypotheses receives the strongest support from the given information, then we'd recognize this as a conclusion question, and then we'd apply the corresponding strategy for this particular question type. So given the importance of reading the question stem first, we'll spend time in future lessons learning how to identify question types by reading the question stem first. Okay, so once we've determined the question type, the next step is to read the passage and focus on the specific information needed to tackle that particular question type. Finally, once we've applied the strategy for that particular question type, our last step is to check every single answer choice. Why is this necessary? Well, unlike math questions where we're required to find the one correct answer, verbal questions require us to find the best answer. So although one answer choice may seem pretty good, it's possible that another answer choice is even better. So if we stop checking answer choices once we spot the one that looks good, we may miss the better answer choice later on. So be sure to check every answer choice before making your selection. Okay, so that's the general strategy for all critical reasoning questions. In upcoming lessons, we'll examine the individual strategies for tackling each of these question types.